Hello, I am Yu Chen, and I will be talking about how Emacs may be used to save user freedom on the web. I will begin by describing the background issues, followed by solutions outside of Emacs. Then I will move into the main business of describing several ways to address the issues using Emacs, including free clients in Emacs, web browsers, also known as universal clients in Emacs, uh, approaches using Emacs Web Server and Emacs Web Framework, which allows one to write an Emacs package and get a web app for free, as well as using Emacs as a Firefox extension. Okay, let's now move on to the background issues for this topic. Many of you probably already know what is free software. It is a software that respects four user freedoms, including freedom zero, which is the freedom to use, freedom one is freedom to study and modify a program, freedom two is the freedom to distribute exact copies of a program, and freedom three is the freedom to distribute modified copies. Um, different environments have different norms with regards to user freedom. So for example, uh, GNU Linux distributions uh, defaults to free software, uh, even though the official kernel Linux contains non-free code, like non-free firmware. Uh, what I mean is people generally expect free software on this uh, in these environments. Free soft, there's plenty of free software built on other free software, so generally people can accomplish tasks using free software only. Um, Emacs, by comparison, is even better. It has freedom building um, as it is highly customizable with self-documenting config configurations. Uh, when a list, list form is evaluated by the user in Emacs, the change is instantly reflected in the environment. Thus, it converts users to hackers effortlessly. From writing set queue statements, which is similar to configurations in the majority of other programs, to writing functions, which are building blocks of ELIS features, to writing features and publishing packages, it is a natural progression. In this sense, Emacs is perhaps the most uh, Emacs perhaps has the most gentle learning curve for hackers. And on the other hand, the default license in the Emacs community is GNU General Public License version 3 or later, which is the best soft free software license apart from the Ethereum license. Um, now let's move on to web browsers, which by contrast does not default to freedom. Um, for one thing, uh, free software JavaScript projects default to um, Xbat, which license, which is also commonly known as an MIT license, which is a lax permissive license that could be exploited as developers could write non-free derivatives and subjugate for user freedom. This also contributes to the JavaScript trap. Most popular web browsers nowadays simply download and run any JavaScript code requested by this web page. Uh, generally speaking, there are two camps on this issue. Uh, one, one side would say JavaScript is simply part of life and an integral part of the so-called modern web. Just accept it and there's no point in fighting it. Indeed, it can be frustrating when greedy by this page requires JavaScript and can cookies to continue, or even a blank page when opening a web page while disabling JavaScript. The other camp takes a more principled of position and says JavaScript is unnecessary. I mean, people use the web mainly for database-like operations to interact with data stored on other people's computers, like querying, uh, creating, updating, deleting. I mean, 99% of the things happen in getting data, including reading news, watching videos, downloading images, etc., and posting data, including publishing this sort of materials, publishing news, comments, videos, why does this need any programs to do funny computations, right? Modern web browsers are also a pain to use. They are the opposite to Emacs in terms of customization cap capabilities. Um, so uh, this, such problems on the client side is the main focus of this talk. On the server side, the issue is known as SaaS, service as a soft software substitute. Um, it is about doing computing for users uh, on other people's computers, which the user has no visibility, let alone control. Examples include translation or photo editing in so-called web applications. And another example would be um, the, 
web application make recommendations based on user data and suggest what the users read or watch next. On one hand, SaaS is an intractable problem because free software is all about user freedom on one's own computer, uh, not someone else's computer. On the other hand, this is also a lesser problem because it has trivial solutions, which is self-hosting and keeping computations local. I mean, wouldn't it be nice to use a photo editing web application, but without the web? Right, now let's move on to solutions uh, outside of Emacs that uh, tackle these um, problems. Mm, there are generally two ways to fix this issue. Uh, one is uh, blocking non-free JavaScript, and the other is substituting with uh, free programs. Let's start with blocking. Uh, LibreJS, for example, is a Firefox, Firefox extension blocking non-free, non-trivial JavaScript. It works by intercepting, filtering, or requests for JavaScript, recognizing the ones that are trivial or free, and blocking the execution of the others. Now, um, as an experiment, I locked the LibreJS output for about two weeks, and during which of all the web pages I loaded, 23 domains has at least have at least some LibreJS compliance scripts. That is not much, uh, though I did use other means to reduce the scenarios where I need to load web pages with JavaScript in Firefox, like using um, a text browser like links. Um, then there's also no script, which is like LibreJS, but it blocks all scripts, whether free or non-free, trivial or non-trivial. So um, the problem with blocking uh, is that the blocking with certain scripts and accepting others, uh, there are like, I can think of two problems. One is that it does not help with freedom one, which uh, is the freedom to allow users to modify a program and use it in place of the original program. Um, and uh, uh, also, it does not help when the non-free JavaScript is mandatory for the functioning of the web page. For example, some pages are blank when non-free JavaScript is not executed. So now let's move on to um, the, uh, the substitution, uh, the other uh, method. Um, so. Um, we, we, let's start with user scripts. It is a script. It is a user-specified JavaScript injected to a web page. Um, a typical example of a user script tool is uh, Grease Monkey. Uh, another idea is a um, proxy that replaces scripts in place. That is sending user-specified scripts as a response to uh, requests for such scripts. So one example would be Hacktilo or Hacktilo, however you pronounce it. It's a tool that's built on top of MITM proxy. It does. It is supposed to do this. I haven't used the Grease Monkey nor Hacktilo for these purposes yet, so I can't say much about these options. Um, so um, then there are also free clients which replace the whole front end. Uh, instead of uh, scripts requested by web pages from the official web clients. Uh, people often refer to them as uh, uh, alternative front end. So YouTube is perhaps the best example as there are so many free clients, including Nvidia's for the web, YouTube DL and YT DLP on the command line, MPV and VLC as GUI desktop, LibreTube and NewPipe for Android, and so on. YouTube DL and YT DLP are especially versatile as they work with many video and audio sites with extractors written in uh, Python, so people can add extractors like extensions. Um, a similar ex uh, tool would be Whoop, uh, short for Web Outside of the Browsers. Um, it is a tool. Uh, it is a command line and GUI program that interacts with many web services, even banks. Um, and uh, there are browser extensions that automatically redirect to these clients. For example, Redirector and LibreDirect redirect to the free web clients. And one could use OpenWeath, um, it's another extension, uh, to redirect to free non-web clients, for example, by opening YouTube links with MPV. Okay, now let us move to Emacs-based solutions. Uh, they are based on the same ideas, but using Emacs. So first, free clients in Emacs. 
basically alternative front ends written in Ellipse. Um, there are several advantages. For example, integration with other Emacs tools, good for archiving, making use of Emacs libraries, um, extensibility thanks to Emacs' own extensibility and customizability. Examples include Mastodon.el for Mastodon, or Mastorg for viewing and archiving tools with org, SX for Stack Exchange, uh, BuildBot.el for BuildBot, etc. Here's an example of a master org displaying the hierarchy of a toot in org. Uh, just wait. Right, so this is the toot itself. This is the first reply. This is the reply to the reply, and so on. And uh, here is an example uh, of uh, opening Stack Exchange link uh, using SX. And uh, let's check out the tag. Um, so we can browse the Stack Exchange Emacs sites with ease. Um, the idea is quite simple. Uh, just use APIs to get data and display it in Emacs, or just a scrape like uh, requesting HTML and processing it. An example of scraping is, is, is HN Reader, which scrapes uh, hacker news web, web pages and renders them in org buffers. Here's how uh, HN Reader fetches and displays the hacker news front page. <laughs> And um, one could go into the comments, which shows a similar hierarchy to must.org output. And, and of course, there are limit, limitations um, for this method, which is um, um, not limited to Emacs. Uh, there are basically limitations to any ad hoc bespoke clients which is um, catch-up games with remote server, which may change the API interface endpoints or even structure of the responses. And uh, this brings us to uh, web browsers in Emacs. Web browsers are universal clients because all sites support browsers. So in a world of no JavaScript, there will be no need to uh, write bespoke clients. In such a world, instead of using JavaScript code to fetch JSON, web developers make server do the heavy lifting and just send the complete HTML over. Okay, back to reality. Um, EWW, the default Emacs browser, is what people refer to as a text browser, uh, even though it, does, uh, it is not text only and it supports images too. It is a good solid browser that supports forms, etc. And the downside is that it does not support CSS, so the formatting could be a bit ugly sometimes. Um, there are no, uh, there are some other browsers in Emacs too, like Emacs-W3M, which is backed by W3M, and Luwak, which is backed by Lynx. Uh, sorry for the naming, by the way. Um, they often consist of a backend that fetches URL and parses HTML. Uh, for example, the built-in URL package and the, the libxml2 binding in Emacs are decent enough, and the front-end that renders the HTML, like um, SHR or Lynx, etc. There's also an X widget WebKit, but it, uh, it it is um uh but this browser executes JavaScript, so it does not really help in this case. Um, browser extensions on Emacs are effortless, um, uh, as they can be written as Emacs packages. For example, one could easily write Elis scripts with similar functionalities to lib redirect and open with. Uh, to redirect um, links, to, to rewrite URLs, or to um, open, say, um, YouTube uh, URL with um, MPB, uh, but with even more flexibility. For example, here's how one could transform a Zoom link to a dialing number so that it is easier to join a Zoom meeting without, without running non-free JavaScript. Um, this mm, might still be bad for privacy, but at least, mm, it's good for freedom. Um, 
Well, as mentioned before, uh, one shortcoming of these uh, Emacs-based browsers, Emacs browser, uh, web browsers, is uh, no support for CSS, so the formatting could leave a lot to be desired. Maybe someone would write an Emacs browser package backed by WKHTML2 PDF, uh, which, uh, when opening a URL, it calls WKHTML to PDF to convert the web page to PDF and opens in, say, PDF view mode of the PDF tools, thus containing formatting and all the URL clicks resolved to the same actions. Um, and also WKHTML to PDF uh, contains a flag that uh, disables JavaScript. So another idea would be to use Firefox as a, a processor to fetch, uh, to fetch uh, URLs. So, uh, maybe um, it can be used to pass back the HTML after executing free JavaScript. Uh, say uh, if the if Firefox has um, LibreJS installed, this requires Firefox to send back the DOM, which could be achieved using native messaging. Uh, more on that later. Um, alternatively, uh, one could also write a Firefox Firefox extension that sends the DOM in the existing tab back to Emacs. Uh, but thinking more about it, I don't think this is actually a useful idea because um, most of the sites that work on the LibreJS also are useful when all JavaScript is blocked. Um, so uh, this means like these sites are viewable uh, on the uh, UWW, Luwak, etc. Um, and uh, another issue is that it, this could also make running non-free JavaScript easier which is harmful to user freedom. Okay, let's move on to the idea of running Emacs as a web server so that Emacs client packages are web apps serving as alternative front ends. Why would we want to do this? Well, as much as one wants to be always in Emacs, it is not always feasible. For example, one may be on the go and needs to look up something on the phone. On the other hand, Emacs client packages are just alternative frontends, but written in Elisp and running Emacs. With the help of Emacs web server package, we can access Emacs packages on the web. Emacs web server package is not something new, uh, but seems to be underused in the community somehow. Okay, let's start with a simple example called Hello Emacs. It is uh, pretty straightforward. Just require the w, uh, the web server uh, feature and run WS start to start a server process and send the string hello emacs to the process regardless of the request. Um, as you can see, it is going to be available at port 9000 of localhost. Let's uh, try it out. So we need to first evaluate this code block. And uh, it works. And to stop a server, uh, just run ws stop on this web server project, uh, sorry, web server object. So let's evaluate. Uh, yep, it stopped. Okay, now let's move on to something funny that you should never run on the public web. I call it yolo.el. It uses HTMLIs to make any Emacs buffer available on the web. Let's try it out. Um, just require the thing and start the server by yolo start and uh, it's available at port uh, 9999. Um, by default, uh, the root domain shows the splash screen which needs to be available. Running display splash screen require, uh, ensures that, but here I have already run it. So let's have a look. And here we have the splash screen. Um, Emacs tutorial and such. Unfortunately, none of these links work. <laughs> And which is something uh, we will revisit later. Um, so um, uh, to uh, to show an arbitrary buffer, uh, just uh, use the buffer name as the uh, as a path. For example, um, the the slide has the buffer name web.org. So we can display it. And um, Let's try something fancier, like the man page of FFmpeg. So this is the man page of FFmpeg, and the buffer name is a bit more complicated. So I have the um, URL available here. And uh, 
Mm. It's missing a star. Um, it's pretty neat if you ask me. <laughs> and um, yeah, um, what else? Well, uh, we can also browse EWW in Firefox. So, for example, let's check out gnu.org and note that the buffer name is EWW with the stars. So, ah, it works. And uh, it has uh, all the graphics even. Um, and uh, no, how about uh, we do it the other way around? So we load the current slide web.org using this funny thing. <laughs> and it works. <laughs> um, not as nice as uh, the org buffer though. Uh, Right, and now that gives me some funny idea. Um, so, um, I'm a firm believer that uh, memes are meant to be enjoyed in silence rather than read out loud. So I will jump straight to um, trying this idea, which is loading the EWW buffer uh, URL with EWW itself. And loading, 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 spoiler, spoiler alert, it never loads. Um, so uh, that concludes the demo, and so we can stop the server, web server with YOLO stop. So um, one could extend YOLO to serve arbitrary Emacs commands, making it even more dangerous. That is, uh, for example, localhost 9000 or 9999 slash m-x slash magit status would run magit status and show the magit status buffer um, in the web browser. Or uh, localhost 9000 dash, um, uh, slash m-x slash eww slash uh, any arbitrary URL to browse arbitrary URL with EWW inside of e uh, inside of Firefox, it can serve as a way to block all JavaScript because EWW does not support JavaScript and enforce preferred color scheme in Firefox since HTML eyes, as you have noticed, faithfully re reflects the theme used in Emacs. Okay, so we know that YOLO is unsafe and needs to be refined. Uh, in fact, we don't necessarily want to run Emacs on a web browser. After all, a modern web browser is something one has to fight all the time and should be avoided whenever possible. We want to be instead be able to um, access things when forced to be in a web browser, in which case only the motivations of, of an alternative front-end apply. Moreover, the ideal situation is an Emacs web framework, uh, a tool that automatically transforms Emacs packages to web apps so that one does not need to write extra code to get a web app that does the same thing as the package. We also need all links in the web pages to work. As noted before, the links on the YOLO Emacs splash screen do not work. So here's a proof of concept example. It's called bomb.el. It gets some weather forecast data from the Australian Bureau of Meteorology and, dis and displays it in org buffer. So let's try it out. One could do MX bomb, um, which shows an org buffer with links to each state. So based in Melbourne, naturally, I would like to find out uh, the weather of Victoria. And uh, yes, to execute this command, wait, 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 right. And uh, we are at a buffer that shows uh, and, uh, the weather forecast of the whole of Victoria in the hierarchy. Um, note that this back button takes you to the previous page. Um, so mm, here are the regions of Victoria. I think Melbourne is in central, and uh, yeah, it shows the seven-day weather forecast of Melbourne. 
can also reach this page by running um, directly. Um, let's see, uh, directly bomb stage, Vic. Okay, so this works. Uh, and uh, this is uh, bomb as a an Emacs package. Now let's check out bomb as a web app transformed by Emacs web framework. We'll start the web server with bomb start, and uh, let's try it out. It's at uh, nine thousand again. Oops, um, invalid path. Oh, that's because it max uh, exactly one command to one path. So remember that we used the BOM command to show the landing page. So here we need the BOM in the path as well. And it shows the same landing page uh, except in HTML. Uh, let's check out Victoria weather forecast as before. And uh, it um, shows an HTML converted from the org buffer using uh, ox exports HTML whatever um, and you can see even the, the back button is here that takes you to slash bomb um, so let's have a look at Melbourne so here it is Ray it works um, so um, yeah as usual you can stop the uh, the web server with bomb stop um, right and um, Alternatively, it can also be deployed directly in the terminal uh, in a dedicated uh, Emacs daemon or Emacs daemon. So you can see that there's a one one correspondence between the Emacs package interface and the web interface, uh, and that implies some restrictions to the Emacs package for the Emacs web framework to be able to do its job, right? For example, uh, the package needs to have an org interface and the links that trigger other commands need to be an elisp links so that the Emacs web framework can translate it to web server URL path. Note that Emacs web, uh, web framework is not a real package. I wrote some functions in bomb.el serving the purpose and uh, they should be separated out eventually without much trouble. One could um, get weather forecast without running JavaScript anyway, which makes bomb.eo less important as an alternative as an alternative web client, though it does provide a dare I say clean and minimal interface compared to common weather forecast web pages. Other more relevant use cases could be Mastodon, whose official web client requires JavaScript to display display a post. The Mastorg package that shows an org hierarchy of toots rooted as a given toot could be a low hanging fruit. The limitation of org interface requirements can also be relaxed in further work if one extend if one could extend Emacs web framework to translate back and forth between Emacs widgets, say, including buttons and Emacs and web page widgets, including links. Another more far fetched idea would be to translate to other types of interfaces like GNU slash Linux uh, or an Android GUI. And uh, um, how about animations, uh, say MX Butterfly or even uh, web games from uh, Emacs games? The possibilities are limited in this, as always in Emacs. Um, and I also noticed some limitations when trying to actually host bomb.el on the public web. So given the limited access to the Emacs server, um, like uh, I was comfortable enough to give bomb.el a go to serve it on the public web. However, I immediately stopped after noticing how slow it is. It can take more than 30 seconds to load a page of weather forecast for a stage. I am also not sure how many simultaneous connections it can handle. Um, in any case, I think the package Emacs web server could do with some performance enhancement. Right. Because of the time constraints, I will briefly touch one final idea, which is uh, to use uh, Emacs as a Firefox browser extension. 
We already have a org protocol which allows Firefox to communicate with a running Emacs server by sending an org protocol URL to the latter. It can be used not just for capturing or storing link, but to execute arbitrary code on any uh, component of the URL. <laughs> Uh, however, it is a uh, fire and forget, and uh, Emacs cannot tell Firefox what to do. Um, and uh, there may be a length restriction too, so for example, Firefox may not be able to send back the whole, uh, say, DOM. Uh, this claim needs to be verified though. Um, uh, native messaging uh, is one solution to this problem. It is a two-way communication channel between a Firefox web extension and a local system process started by the web extension. Um, the process could be a Emacs server, which would make Emacs effectively a Firefox web uh, browser extension. Um, with Elisp as, uh, in this case, Elisp would be the main uh, extension language rather than JavaScript. However, JavaScript is still needed at the Firefox end of the communication channel. As a simple example of this idea, Firefox could ask Emacs to redirect a URL by removing tracking and using alternative front-end, etc. However, I was not able to do this mm, to implement this due to some tricky business with enforcing synchronicity that allows the web extension to wait for responses from Emacs. Some further work, I suppose. So that concludes my talk and thank you for your attention.